Hi everyone, Sandra Sherman here. Greetings from Vienna. It's Gypsy time again and this is the lead guitar part of a two volume feature on Minor Swing by Django Reinhardt. I'll teach you the melody as well as a one chorus solo which starts out easy but gets a little more difficult towards the end. Since both videos have the exact same arrangement and tempo, you can play the lead guitar part that you learn in this video over the chords of the rhythm video. I'll show you everything, everything slowly and in detail. I also have a slow tempo version at the end of, the, uh, of this guitar tutorial. And I also made tabs, which you can download from the description box below the video. All right, Django, here we come. <laughs> swing is in the key of A minor. We have two different heads which means we have a different melody in the beginning than we have in the end for the outro. In between I've arranged uh, one chorus of solo for you. All right we use a very fat pick in Gypsy. You can buy the Gypsy picks. Uh, they come from Holland but you can use a regular jazz pick but you need a pick that does not bend is not flexible, must be really hard, especially when you play lead guitar in Gypsy, okay? And we have a special kind of picking the strings and it's called rest stroke. And what we do is, let me see if I can show you this in this angle, you, we hit a string and we rest at the uh, next string, okay? So we don't usually play into the air but we play like this. So we can hit it real hard. And that's for that gypsy sound. Hit the strings real hard. It doesn't matter if they're buzzing because they're always buzzing. They always buzz. And uh, use a non-flexible pick. Okay, let's get started. Here is the first head. Let me play it for you quickly all the way through so you can hear what it sounds like and then I break it all down for you slow and easy. Here we go. One, two, three, four. start with the seventh we're in A minor so you might be aware of that A minor pentatonic here and that's um, A minor A minor A minor scale that's mostly uh, what this song is about seventh fret of the uh, D string then the fifth of the G and then the fifth of the E string that's an A minor triad played arpeggiated one two three three quarter notes then we have a triller going on. We have a fifth fret of the B string, that's where we ended, landed. And then we hammer and we pull it off again. And this is really quick, 
really fast. And then after that, immediately follows the D minor arpeggio. That's the D on the seventh of the G string, sixth of the B string, and the fifth of the E string. And the rhythm here is a little different. It's one, two, and. So you have the trilla before, and it, the trilla is faster actually. Okay, in at slow tempo, that first thing, three, four. Then you have a rest of two counts, three, four, and you repeat everything three times. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. And then you have a two, sorry, a two bar break. You count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, while the bass player and the rhythm guitar plays their stuff are playing their stuff. And then you, you repeat everything again, three times. Then you have a one bar break, one, two, three, four, and the last bar of the head is our solo pickup, which I'm gonna explain uh, right after this, um, when, I, when we come to the solo section. Okay, let's hear that entire Head one now at slow tempo. Welcome to the solo section. Here is phrase one at regular speed first and then I'll break it all down for you. One, two, three, four, one. All right, we start in the last bar of the head. So this is called a pickup bar. There is an E7 there. And we start with an E7 flat 9 arpeggio, which is the same as a as any diminished arpeggio within the chord. So we start on the G sharp, that's the uh, fourth of the E, <coughs> and count one and. One and two, rings into the two, then I have the seventh of the E, and back to the fourth. Three, four, one. Then I'm on the 6th of the uh, B string, then the 7th of the G string, then the 4th of the G string. And that's the diminished uh, G sharp diminished arpeggio. Now we have an a minor 6 chord, and that's the first chord of the solo actually, because the previous bar was a pickup bar. Okay, and here we have a, a basic gypsy jazz lick. Django Reinhardt lick. 7th of the uh, D string, that's the root, the A. I hit it again, I, I pick it again, sorry. Then the sixth of the uh, D string and back to the seventh. Then the fifth of the G string and the fifth by bridging over to the B string. And the E string as well. This is nothing else but a simple A minor triad and a little ornamentation. Ornament? One, two, and three, and four, and so from the previous bar, one and then 
gonna go to the fourth. We're still on A minor. Seventh, fifth. This one is a quarter note, so it's longer. Then the seventh of the B string, the fifth, and a bridge over to the last note of that chord, that's the C, and that's the fifth of the G string. So that A minor. From beginning, three, four, one. And the last one is D minor. And I just play uh, the arpeggio notes, the chord tones. Seventh of the D string, sixth of the B, you have to skip the string here. Then back, 7th of the G string, and skip the string again to the 5th of the E string. Skipping string, back to the skipped string, skipping strings. Alright, here's the entire phrase number one for you at slow tempo. One, two, three, four, one. And here is phrase two of the solo. I'll play it quick again and then break it down. One, two, three, four, one. Alright, we are in the second bar of our D minor chord and I'll play a D minor 6 arpeggio with a little chromatic in there. I start on the one end, so I kind of uh, mute the strings on one, and I play the seventh of the E string and I have a pull up to the chromatic, to the sixth of the E string, then I pick the fifth of the E string. 6 of the B, now I go back my arpeggio. The 7th of the G, and the 9th of the D, and the 7th of the D. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... And from here I have... Uh, next is the E7 chord. And I pull off to the 6th fret of the D string. And that note is the third of the E7. That's perfect. So the chord changes and I'm on a chord tone. And now I play a scale. I play the fifth mode of A harmonic minor and it's called over, a, over E7 and then it's called E Phrygian dominant scale or I call it E HM5 because it's the fifth mode of the A harmonic minor scale. All right. I play it in thirds, so I always jump over one uh, scale note. We are on the, from the sixth to the ninth of the D string. Then we change to the seventh of the G string, the tenth of the D, ninth of the G, seventh of the G, and tenth of the G. of the B. All right, that was the first E7 bar. The second one is a classic gypsy line again. We are on, we have a uh, diminished arpeggio again, like in the beginning, but three frets up. Seventh of the E string, the tenth of the E string, and now I add chromatic, the ninth and the eighth. And now I pull off to the chord tone on the 7th fret. And now I'll go uh, descending uh, 
diminished arpeggio. Uh, sorry, that's the ninth of the B, the tenth of the G, and the seventh of the G. Right. One more time. And both E7 parts from the pickup here. And that last one is an A minor 6, and I play a, an A minor at 9 arpeggio. That's real nice, and it's typical gypsy jazz. You, on a minor chord, also on a major chord, but typically on a minor chord, you play the triad plus the ninth of the chord, and you arpeggiate it. I start on the third of the chord, that's the C, it's on the tenth of the D string. Then I go to the uh, ninth of the G string, the tenth of the B string, and the seventh of the E string. That's so beautiful. That's that kind of chord quality. Here is the chord. Dun, 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 dun. And I'll add that ring into the next A minor chord. We always have two bars. All right. Next, I'm going to show you everything at slow tempo. That entire phrase number two, slow tempo. So uh, that was, yeah, one, two, three, four, one. And here's phrase three. One, two, three, four. Some interesting stuff in here. We start, we're still on the A minor, that previous arpeggio we had rings to the four and one and two and three four and then I uh, pick this note again the seventh of the E string and have a slide to the eighth and the count is three four and one so from the previous one three four and one I stay here for a quarter note and one and I go and I go back that arpeggio descending All right, tenth of the B, ninth of the G, tenth of the B. Here's that. The ninth of the D, that's also the ninth of the chord again, okay? The seventh is the root, seventh of the D. And now I'll bridge over to the seventh of the a string. Oh, sorry. That's an A minor at nine arpeggio, typical gypsy jazz arpeggio, uh, played backwards, played uh, descending. Okay, from the previous phrase. It's for a D minor chord, and I do the same thing with the D minor arpeggio. <coughs> Actually, D minor at nine. So that's the same chord quality, but now I'm in that same position, and since I'm in D, I have to change uh, um, the shape. I hammer onto that F, that's the eight of the A string, okay? Then the seventh of the D, and I bridge over to the seventh of the G string, and that's a triplet. And one and triplet. Then I have my that the ninth of the G string is the ninth of the D minor. That's the add nine. Then I go over to the tenth. Use your ring finger here. 
then I bridge over to the 10th of the B and the 10th of the E string. Here's that D minor shape, okay? Then the 12th of the E, sorry, and the 10th of the E. Use your index finger for this now, because now we're in this shape. And one. And now another typical gypsy thing for that second bar of that D minor chord. I'm in the D minor shape here on the 10th fret. I'm on the 11th actually for on the uh, B string and I bend to each major, major sixth and that's the 12th fret. So I bend up, I search for that note, the B, and I bend it up. Use two fingers, one is too weak. I play a half note, one, two, then I go back, but it's not audible, so you have to move your string sh shortly. I bend it again, and I release it immediately. So that first bend is not followed by a release, but that second bend is followed by a release. And then I go to the tenth of the B string. One, two, three, and four, and... And that rings into the A chord that follows. That's the root of the A. All right, let me play first, parts, uh, first few bars for you. Three, four. We are in A minor, we count to three. One, two, three, and now we have another line in for A minor. Three. I start on the three and on a chromatic note, that's the eight of the D string. And now I approach the ninth of the D string. I bar over or I bridge over to that ninth of the G, uh, G string and I go to the tenth of the A, uh, B string which is an A. One, two, three. Make that short. Staccato note. Then I pick it again. The tenth, the ninth and the tenth of the B string. Right. Then the eight, eighth of the E string and the tenth of the B string, and there we go. All right, and here's the entire phrase number two for you at slow speed. One, two, three, four. Next is phrase four with an awesome gypsy trick. One, two, three, four. All right, we have all diminished chords here. We are on E7 actually. <clears throat> and the first thing we play, that diminished chord is actually on E7. It's um, the movable chord form of D7. I start with the fourth of the E string, the third of the B and the fourth of the G string. That's an E7. Just these three strings, okay? No D string. Um, I start with the highest string and I play an up uh, beat. No, what's it called? Uh, up stroke, yeah. Then I go to the G string and play rest strokes. We learned that in the beginning. 
So don't do that. That's that won't be uh, quick enough. And those are 16 notes. So you have four equally long notes. One E and E. Then diminished chords are movable chord shapes and they repeat themselves all three frets. So one, two, three frets up, we play the same thing. Highest note again. Right? And you move without having a rest here. It's all happening very quickly. Three up. And we're on 10, 9, 10. Another three up. That's 13, 12, 13. I think you should be able to reach a thir the 13th fret even if your body starts at the 12th fret. Oops, that was not good. Then we go back three frets. That's a 10th and 9th. Back three frets. 7th and 6th. Back three frets. So once to the 13th and all the way back to the 4th and then one up to the 7th. All right. Those are two bars of E7. Those, uh, since each of these are a quarter note all together, four 16 notes are a quarter note, and four fourths is a bar, we have eight groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two bars. Start playing, practicing this really slowly and add like five beats every day to your metronome. Okay, a little quicker. Then for that last chord, last bar, last two bars, sorry. I have a stop at one. We're on A minor now. One. Oops. I play sixth intervals of six now. I have my eighth fret of the E string and the ninth fret of the G string. And I have to, you have to mute the B string here. Also touch with your middle finger, touch the D string because now we are not into, but we strum from the air. We hit it really hard. One and then my middle finger glides down here. It's the guiding finger. And we are on nine of G and nine of E now. Another pair of sixth in the key of A minor. And the last pair of sixth is the uh, fifth fret. Five of G and five of E. One and three, four. And the last chord in our solo is an E7. And I play that diminished again, but this time not the only three, but all fours for uh, strings. And that's the uh, third of the D, the fourth of the G, the third of the B, and the fourth of the E string. I play that once. Then I have two scratches. I release my pressure, the pressure of the left hand, just touching the strings, and I get a dead note sound. So this is uh, called a scratch down and up scratch. Two sixteen notes. And another down note. And then I go up uh, three, one, two, three, three frets, because this is a diminished chord, repeats themselves all the uh, three frets. And then I'm up here. That's it. All right. So from those, uh, from the trick.
and we made it to head two, which is different than head one. So I'll play it for you quickly and then break it down for you. One, two, three, four. We start out like we did in head number one on the seventh of the D string, fifth of G, fifth of B. But now we have a different rhythm for that second bar. That second bar is seven D also, fifth G also, but then twice of the B. Right? Then we have a little triller going on. Five of B hammers to the sixth of B and pulls off to the fifth of, of B. And now D minor chord, arpeggio, seventh of G, sixth of B and fifth of E, like in head one. And now we have our different rhythm. In bar two, all together. And the first two bars. And E7, another arpeggio. Ninth of G, ninth of B, and seven of E. And then, again, but a little quicker, just one top note. Then the 8th of the E string and the 10th of the B string. And that's a short note. So we have... And then we have a 2 bar rest. Huh? 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and everything is repeated. Sorry. And now immediately after that last note of the uh, repeat, we start our ending line. We are on the seventh of the G string and pull it off to the sixth. Then back to the seventh, we pick it again. And then we go up chromatically to the 14th, 14th fret. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, oh sorry, 9, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And we don't go like, this is easier to play fast than slow to be honest, because we're not that exact on, the, on these chromatic notes up to the 14th. The 14th is the important note and you have to check what time it is. You have to be there. Everything in between is not that important. You just glide along, slide along actually. And your right hand should be alternating. This one is important. Then I go to the 14th of the D string and the 7th of the D string. Oops. One more time. And my ending chord is an A minor 6 uh, 9 chord. I have my open A string, the 8th, uh, sorry, 10th fret of the D the ninth of the G and the seven is barred over from the B to the E string. And then I have my tremolo. And this kind of tremolo in the right hand 
octaves is playable called this tremolo. It's not really a tremolo, but you call it like that. Uh, don't hold your pick tight. Hold it very loose. So even if uh, it could kind of uh, fly, get wings and fly away, but that can happen. But please hold it very loosely. And then you just make up and down movements out of your wrist. All right. So here is that uh, last phrase. That was fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Check out my other video on minor swing with the rhythm guitar part. If you liked this video, please like the video, which means give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button to never miss out on a new video of mine. See you next week. Servus, Papa.